Today, I'd like to think for a few minutes about how Christians can respond in times of serious crisis. And I think that one passage that is helpful in this regard is found in the book of 1 Samuel, uh, chapter 30. It's uh, the recording of a story and an experience that happened in the life of David early on before he was king over Israel. And it, it tells us of a time that he was out in battle uh, with his men and uh, then returning home to his headquarter city, which was a place called Ziklag. And what we find is that David and his men discover that something terrible has happened. Verse 3 tells us this. It says, And when David and his men came to the city, they found it burned with fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So what has happened, David and his men discover, is that while they were off in battle, their city had been invaded by their enemies, and everyone that they loved, their wives and their sons and their daughters, have been carried away as captive. And everything that they own, all of their possessions now, are, are going up in flames. And the response of David and his men to this crisis is as follows. It says, Then David and the people who were with him raised their voices and wept until they had no more strength to weep. Uh, this is a scene which is difficult for us to imagine. These strong, tough, brave battle-hardened soldiers who are probably lying on the ground out of strength from weeping and, and, and crying as the, the city burns uh, in front of them. There is no one in this group who's trying to put on a happy face or to be a tough guy or to pretend that this is not an awful, tragic, horrible situation. And I think even in, in this, there's, there's a lesson to be gained for us. Uh, in, in our culture today, I, I think it's so easy for us to want to push down our feelings, to, to hold deep within us our fear and concern and, and, and pain. And we will do at times almost anything to distract ourselves from those feelings or to just keep ourselves busy so that we don't have to feel it and and to face it and yet what we find here is that sometimes part of just being a human being is weeping it's facing the pain that we see in the world uh, around us and yet uh, what we find is even though they were able to do that, able to face these things sometimes that are hard for us today to face, yet still during this time of crisis, we find that David and his men take, take these feelings of sorrow and pain in two different directions. It, it says, and David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because all the people were bitter in soul, each for his sons and daughters. Uh, the fear and pain and, and concern we find in David's men kind of began to harden in their hearts so that they became bitter. And, and in fact, uh, they blamed David for this situation. And it says that they started to talk about stoning him. Now, this put David in an even worse situation than he was in in the first place. Now, not only does he have his wives and his sons and his daughters who have all been taken and his city in flame, but now his own men are talking about killing him. And yet, we have uh, recorded for us in just a few words the response from David, and it's a response that I hope all of us can take to heart ourselves. It says this, it says, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. 
Now, we don't know exactly what that looked like. Uh, we're not told what David was thinking or what he was feeling or what he was praying. But what we do know is that there was something that David experienced in his moment of crisis that enabled him to find a newfound sense of, of strength and of courage and of confidence in the Lord. And in fact, if you go ahead and read how the story plays out, you will see that David operated out of that confidence and, and courage and strength. And again, we don't know exactly what it was, but we do have in the Bible so much insight into the kind of heart and the kind of thoughts and the sort of spiritual life that, that David had. Uh, so much of that was recorded for us in the Psalms. Many of them were written by him. And I want to read just a brief section of, of one of them, Psalm 62 because I, I think it's helpful for us in that it, it shows us the kind of heart that David had towards the Lord and the heart that I believe shined during this time of terrible crisis. Psalm 62, verse 5, For God alone, David wrote, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. I believe that those words, those concepts, those truths were things that David held to during his moment of crisis. And I pray that they are the truths and the concepts that you are holding to as well. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. For God is a refuge to us.